I bought an ANET A8 3D printer. The 3D printing fans of you will know that this is a bottom of the barrel 3D printer. For everyone else, well, this video is about a bottom of the barrel 3D printer. They became popular about 2 years ago for the low price of less than 150 euros shipped. I got this one second hand as an open original package. The price was one third below that retail price, so I couldn't resist. Don't worry, this is not yet another video that tells you how to improve your ANET A8 3D printer. I will not tell you how to replace the weak original power supply with a beefy computer power supply unit. I will also not tell you how to upgrade the bearings, but just a little hint, the shitty side cutters that come with the printer are ideal to get the retainer rings out. I will also not tell you to use better timing belts or how to add a hotbed MOSFET so that the undersized one on the main board doesn't release the magic blue smoke. Speaking of smoke, I will also not tell you how to bypass the badly chosen heatbed connector or how to flash Marlin so that the printer doesn't burn down your house. So why this video then? Well, I knew about the poor build quality of some of these printers before I bought mine. But I am sure this one was made on a Monday morning after long holidays. Also, I am still me, so I came up with some unusual hacks and modifications to that printer that might be interesting for some of you. I did not film the assembly of the frame, but it is pretty much straightforward. Here it is. Although, did I mention the Monday morning thing? Am I the only one where all these rods are a rattle fit in the laser cut holes? I used painter's tape around the rods to ensure a better fit. And worse, one of my axle couplings was bad and it held this lead screw in place off center and crooked. Because of that, it was locking up in the nut. The coupling looked straight on the outside, but the hole for the 5mm motor shaft was drilled crooked. I had to drill it down straight and then use a thin metal trim on the right side to adjust the axle position before tightening the screws around the motor shaft. Also, I think these holes here in the bracket are supposed to be M3 but they should not have a thread in it, as far as I understood at least. I drilled them out. And my bed plate came already with scratches. Ok, after assembly was done, I addressed the most obvious stability elephant in the room. The plastic frame is a terrible design. It warps easily and is hard to get precisely level. I didn't even try out the printer before fixing that. There are 3D printable part designs available for stabilizing the frame, but for some of these I doubt that they help a lot. Instead, I have made an enclosure from plywood for the printer with a solid base plate and rigid walls. And I have added pieces for stabilizing the frame. These clamps here make sure the frame is flat and square and the planks here prevent the tower from moving sideways. And I did something unusual. You may have noticed that this printer looks shorter than usual. Well, it is. I have cut off 5 cm from the metal rods with an angle grinder. I am giving up some of my building space here, of course, but I am sure that 22 by 16 cm are fine for me. I shortened my printer because, well, the printer is larger than I expected actually. The modified printer fits in a box that is only 40 cm deep. It fits on a small cabinet and can be carried around easy enough, weighing only about 15 kilos. I told the Marlin firmware of course that my printer is shorter and I configured the slicer software Cura to take that into account as well. A typical modification for that printer is a 3D printed X-axis build tensioner. But that extension would have made the printer even wider and I came up with a much smaller solution. I used two of these wire loops here and some contact pins to solder together a belt mounting bracket. A M2 screw connects it to a small angle piece which is attached to the hot end. I can use the screw to adjust the tension, although I admit that it is not as comfortable as the other solution would have been. I have repositioned many parts of my printer to reduce the cable mess. 
My computer power supply unit is placed in the bottom front. It has two 12 volt rails that can provide 18 amperes each. One rail powers the heated pad via the MOSFET and the other one the rest of the printer. The MOSFET module sits in the airstream of the power supply unit. The main board is placed above so that the SD card slot is easy to reach. The control unit goes on top. There is a fan above the main board that keeps all stepper drivers cool. A further tip that I saw was connecting the two Z-axis motors with a belt. That is recommended because the X-axis bridge gets crooked easily when the motors are out of sync or turned by hand. I did something simpler. I glued two small wood pieces here and here and then got the bridge exactly level. Then I marked the positions of the LED screws. The marks tell me when the bridge is crooked and I can check it before each print and correct if needed. The power supply unit also has a 5 volt rail, obviously. I use it to power a Raspberry Pi Zero, which creates a video live feed that I can view within my home network. The video comes from this old webcam and the command line tool motion creates the stream. I have also included some LED lights so that I can see properly what is going on. Well, time for some test prints. This little cube here is literally my first print. It came out pretty good, even without yet working bed heating and with using cheap painter's tape. Just some tiny wobble that I need to address, most likely from the bed. My second print was this fan grid here that I needed for another project. I used more of the PLA filament that came with the printer for that. I mean, I had to do something with it. This time I used the heated bed and proper tape. The grid came out perfect after nearly two hours. I used the rest of the PLA for printing a Banshee. It is scaled down to 80% and printed at 0.1mm layer height. It looks great already, although not completely perfect. There are small imperfections here and here. And some holes are not exactly round. I actually had my y-axis belt a little bit too loose. Then I designed some empty nut holders and cable clamps to finish the PLA rest. The nut holders allow me to use M3 screws for the lid so that I can easily take it off and the cable clamps can hold two wires with a tiny screw. What was left? Ah right, the spool holder. Mm, this bottle is a perfect fit in the spool. I have cut off the top and drilled a hole in the bottom. A plastic piece holds the top in place around the shaft. I guess I should say a bit more about fire hazards. Placing a 3D printer in a wooden box might not sound like the smartest idea and I guess it is not. But I took quite some precautions. All cables that pass a high current are either directly soldered or they have proper cable clamps instead of clamping in the bare copper strand wire. All heat sinks sit in an airstream and I made sure that cables that move around are secured so that connectors don't get loose over time. That is important for the hot end, but also for the heated bed. The LED lights run at a lower power than what they are rated for. And finally, my box has its own smoke detector for that rare case where everything goes wrong. Okay, done. Here's a cheap 3D printer in a box. I can actually still recommend these printers when you can get your hand on one for cheap and when you have fun doing a lot of modifications. I am very happy with the print result and will use it for future projects. Maybe you see it again in a future video. See you next time!